out there today. Well, I find in this autumn time of life, I have a propensity to stare down the void of my fast shrinking life. I find the only thing that keeps me going is this horn. Corn? Been a bumper year for corn this year. <laughs> it's such a joy. Indeed, is there anything more joyful than the sight of a field of fluttering ripe corn? Anyhow, it stops them complaining. Stops who complaining? The farmers. <laughs> <laughs> Would someone explain to me how my horn got mixed up with undulating corn and disgruntled farmers? Ow. Henry, why the hell did you bring in that amplifier today? Didn't we agree at the last practice to try out my new one? You agreed. I didn't. Besides, mine's ten times better. You've got some nerve. This amplifier is top of the range, PB. I can't hold a candle to mine for sound. How would you know? You're deaf as a post. Ha! <laughs> I may be deaf, but I'm a tiger in the sack. And you don't need fearing for that. <laughs> Some tiger. A pussycat's more like it, and a neutered one at that. <laughs> Gertrude, your sarcasm, as usual, has all the subtlety of a sledgehammer. Henry, Gertrude. Will you please stop arguing? Get your act together. You're holding up the practice. Why 
is Sophie leaving? Gertrude objects to her joining the band because she plays by ear. Huh? Oh, that's my name. Oh. So, since when has anybody who plays in this band by ear not been allowed to play in the band? Those are the rules. Everybody must be able to read music. Your rules, Gertrude, nobody else's. Sophie, sit down and do your stuff. I will.
play for his 50th wedding anniversary at the end of November. Gertrude is one person I don't want there. Look, I know she's not the greatest violinist. No, she's a disaster. But she's so enthusiastic. And she's been so generous. Think of all the financial help she gave us. We mustn't forget that. <sighs> As if she'd let us. Anyway, we've already paid the price. What do you mean? That name she stuck us with, the youngsters? I can't think of a more awful name for a senior's band. Well, we wouldn't have got all those goodies if we hadn't let her get her way with naming the band. And I'm a great believer in not looking a gift horse in the mouth. Obviously. To be honest, Rita, I don't want Gertrude, Alex, or Marigold there. But I do want Sophie. She's one heck of a violinist. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, but you're putting me in an awkward spot. I mean, how do we do a gig like that without them finding out? It'll be in a private house. Perhaps the others could be persuaded to keep their mouth shut. Did I mention it pays $300? Alex, do you think? <laughs> That's good. Do you think there's something going on between those two? Uh, those two? Well, Henry is a ladies' man, you know, all smiles and heavy breathing. <laughs> Just a second. Uh, Rita? Oh, yes, I Gertie was here says you're barking up the wrong tree. She says that Henry wraps his, his package in tin foil, protects the jewels. <laughs> as, as if I'd be interested in Henry's jewels. Why not? <laughs> I have a husband, remember? Oh. Alex, I'm gonna have to think about this gig. All right, it's him. But oh. anyway, you don't have time to think about it, Rita. I'm sorry. It has to be neat, yay or nay today. He wants it confirmed this week. Hmm. Okay, I'll do it. Very good. Uh, everybody, I want you to remember about the Thanksgiving gig next week at the center here. Where else would I be? Gladys, what, what's Rita saying? She's reminding us about the Thanksgiving gig at the center next week. Oh, that's good. Uh, sorry to bother you. My hearing aid it doesn't seem to be working very well. It's okay, Norm. It's not your fault you're so deaf. Uh, oh, everyone. I got this in email this morning. Oh, what is it? Uh, read it out loud, Henry, for the others. <laughs> it's headed, Competition for Seniors Bands, and reads, The 
The music industry of Alberta is searching for the best seniors band in the province. Auditions will be held throughout the province in February. Successful finalists will compete in the competition to be held in April in Edmonton. Interested parties should fill out the form at the bottom of this document and mail it to the above address. Deadline for entries is October 31st. Well, that's only a couple weeks away. Are we or aren't we going to enter our band into this competition? Well, I can't see why not. Aren't we a seniors band? That gets us over the first hurdle. <laughs> What's that sheet they're talking about, Gladys? Rita got an email about a competition for senior bands coming off next year. Surely she's not thinking of entering us in a competition. We'll be the laughing stock of the century. <laughs> what do you think, Alex? I think that at my age I'd be lucky to make it to the competition, but... <laughs> well, what do you... Yeah. What do you think, Rita? I think, I think if we work really hard, we might have a chance. I think, let's, oh, let's do it. It would be very exciting. Well, I'll send the form in anyway. Now, at this juncture, it is essential that we change the name of the band. Oh, here, here. What's oh. wrong with the name? What's right with it? I think it's a marvelous name. I have it on good authority that the name Youngsters makes seniors feel young. Uh, Gertrude. What are they talking about? For crying out loud, Gertrude, look at us. We're nothing but a bunch of antediluvian relics. And I can't think of a more ridiculous name for a seniors band. And for my part, with the arthritis in my hands, arms, shoulders, back, hips, legs, not to mention the rattle in my chest, I feel like anything but a youngster. In my humble opinion, the name The Youngsters is anything but appropriate for a senior's band. What's Rita saying? We're talking about changing the name of the band. It's about time! Uh, I seem to be getting a lot of negative vibes about the name, uh, which suggests to me that there's a consensus in favor of changing it. Um, however, I'd like to see by a show of hands all in favor of changing the name. Ow! <laughs> right, uh, that settles it. We'll change the name. Rita, I need a new Band-Aid for my sore finger. Band-Aid? That's what we should call ourselves. Band-Aid. What did you say, Gladys? I suggested Band-Aid as the new name for our band. How about Band-Aid? That's more appropriate. <laughs> Band age. Norm, you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Gladys. That was your thing. Marigold, I have a Christmas present for you. You do Marigold for me? Yes. Here, open it. Okay. Oh, Marigold, a Terry's chocolate orange and a Toblerone. <laughs> Thanks, Marigold. <laughs> Hi, Gladys. Welcome back. How are you feeling? I'm still feeling a bit groggy. You know, that's... Oh, that bug lasted all over Christmas. Oh, I'm glad to be back, though. I was really sorry to miss that Christmas gig at the hospital. You... <laughs> you don't know how lucky you were. Oh, why? Did something happen? Gertrude found out 
about the 50th anniversary thing we did without her. How did that happen? Well, it all happened through Alex. We were, we were playing that last, that last number, We Wish You a Merry Christmas, and Alex was playing it like a professional. And we all gathered around him afterwards, singing his praises. And then Norm asked the wrong question. What was the wrong question? How did you learn to play like that, Alex? <laughs> to which Alex replied, I got the message. What message? said Norm. The one about the 50th anniversary gig. I wasn't invited to play. Oh, and Gertrude overheard. And uh, yes, and she went straight into the attack. She attacked you, Rita? Uh, no, she attacked Henry first. So, while they were hard at it, myself and Sophie and Marigold, we made our escape through the emergency exit behind the piano. Goodness gracious. What's the matter, Gladys? Well, Rita's just telling me about the night at the hospital, how Gertrude found out about the 50th anniversary gig. And she and the other ladies had to escape out the back. Yeah, they escaped, I didn't. <laughs> Don't tell me she attacked you, Norman. Well, after the women left, Gertrude gave me the evil eye. So I started to get away I, in my wheelchair. I, I was halfway across the floor and I glanced back to see if she was still in pursuit. And in that split second, I broadsided a patient in her wheelchair and the patient went flying. Oh, how awful! <laughs> I'm sorry, Gladys. I can see the funny side of it. That poor, unfortunate patient flying I don't know, Rita. I don't know. I, I do know if, if Gertrude shows up at practice today, it's going to be very awkward. So then the guy says, Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year, Year. Happy New Year Norm! Oh, I didn't get a kiss. Next time. Yours. 
because deep down you're a horny old goat. <laughs> Brownie old colt? That's the name of the horse that won me all that money. <laughs> Okay, I think it's time that we got back to this. Oh, I... no. Ah. <laughs> Ow! He didn't any... My latest amplifier <laughs> wouldn't fit into the trunk of my Porsche. I had to borrow Daryl's minivan. And my new camera. I want to take a group picture of the band. Well, why don't you take a picture where everybody's sitting now, and I'll get a chair and stand next to Murray. No, no, it'll be a much better picture if you're all in a bunch. Now, in the front row, Norm and Gladys Marigold, stay put. The rest of you stand behind them. Oh, all right. Smile. Okay. No, that won't do. I want you mixed up in the back row, a man beside a woman. So uh, going from left to right in the back, we'll have Rita, then Alex, then Sophie, and then Henry. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's better. Are we all ready? Yeah. Yes. No, no, you all look too glum. Now, now this time, I want you to look like you're having fun. Well, throw your arms around each other and give me lots of smiles. All right. <laughs> Great. Good, good, good. Do you think we can get some practice in this afternoon? Hopefully we can get those chairs back in order. What are we playing, Rita? Uh, jealous Hawks. Uh. Now, ready and. to the bingo, and there I met a woman with a smile that would melt any man's heart. She'd uh, recently lost her husband. That was careless of her. <laughs> Gertrude, this is no laughing matter. You get right down to it, there we were, two lonely souls seeking some kind of connection. It was kind of natural we'd fall in together. You make it sound so dramatic, Alex. You should know by now, Gertie, that the relationship between a man and a woman is a precious thing. Yeah, right. A woman needs a man like a lobster needs a bicycle. 
Anyway, I suppose you know how it goes. Lips as soft as red petals. Breath as sweet as the morning dew. The harvest moon rising over the waves. A spring in your step. <laughs> Our age, Alex, there is no spring. It's all sprung. Gertrude. Gertrude, do you find me desirable? Well, if you got rid of all those canyons of wrinkles on your face, I might. <laughs> you know, I'm rather proud of these so-called canyons. Took me a few years to acquire them. Alex, keep your hands to yourself. I'll have you know I'm a virgin. By choice. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Marigold. Just trying to get rid of that stupid fly. Alex, you're not having your usual smoke today? You're just noticing. I quit before Christmas. <laughs> so that's why you're playing the horn so well. Well, that and the fact that my frailty has hit its cruising speed. <laughs> Everybody. Did you know that our Alex has quit smoking? Oh, really? Oh, good, good for you. Good. What did Gertrude say? Alex has quit smoking! <laughs> oh, 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 Awesome! I mean, the size of it. Gertrude, this is going beyond the bounds of decency. Nice picture. Look, everyone, isn't this a lovely picture of Henry and Sophie? Yeah. Read to them what you wrote on the back. Mm -hmm. Go on, read it out, Gertrude. Uh -huh. You sure you want me to read it out? I said read it. Well, if you say so. Go on, read it. Henry, with his latest paramour. Read it louder. They can't hear you. Henry, with his latest paramour. What? She sent that picture to my wife. Oh. I sent it. Yes, you sent it. You took that picture. You remember that rehearsal just after Christmas break when she was so intent on taking our picture with that new camera of hers? This is the result. Oh, I need to go to the washer. You're a real piece of work, Gertrude. I had nothing to do with it. Well, someone must have got hold of a copy and... Well, if you will go Tom catting around... You are a vengeful, vitriolic bitch! Rich? <laughs> you know, that reminds me of something my mother used to say. We were a large family. And every time there was a new addition, she'd say the rich get richer and the poor get children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. You'll be hearing from my lawyer about this, Gertrude. Just you wait. Mm. Overstepped it this time, Gertrude. Just apologize to the Stress in my life as it is. 
You're talking about your granddaughter and the bullying at the school. Well, that's part of it. Well, isn't the school doing something about the bullying? Well, they're working on it. However, some strange lady did do something about it about a week ago when she saw the strapping young fellow come out of school and rip the bag right off of Corey's back and threw the contents onto the snow, she came to Corey's rescue. Oh my goodness! Do you mean he tore the bag off of Corey's back? He certainly did. And when she said to bless her heart when she saw what was happening, she hauled out her cell phone and threatened to call the police unless he put everything back, nice and tidy, back into her bag. And did he back down? He sure did, when he saw his gang slink away at the sight of the cell phone, the slimy little coward did exactly what he was told to do. That kind of Christian act has Good Samaritan written all over it. Oh, it sure does. I wish I knew who she was, because I would really like to thank her. I am sure you would. But Sophie, is there no way I can I can twist your arm and make you come back to the bat? No way, Rita. As far as I'm concerned, Gertrude has achieved her objective. Her objective? To get rid of me. She hates me. She doesn't hate you. Isn't it obvious? She's insanely jealous of you. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Why would she be jealous of me? Because you're such a good violinist. Well, that may be so but I'm still not coming back to the band. Oh, Sophie, please. We need you. We miss you. Well, the only thing that might get me back is a public apology from that awful woman. Honestly. Oh, oh, oh hi, Gladys. Hi, Come Gladys. and join us. Hi, saw you through the window. Can't stay long. Just thought I'd drop in and tell you the latest. Bad news. What? Bad news? About Henry. Something happened to Henry. Oh, you haven't heard. No. Gladys, stop beating about the bush and, and tell us what happened. Not sure I should tell you. Oh, oh you, you're driving me crazy, Gladys. Tell us. I was told in confidence. Oh, tell us what you were told in confidence. <laughs> Okay, I was told about Henry taking Gertrude to court. What? what? On account of that photograph. Holy shit. <laughs> oh. Did Henry tell you this? No, his wife uh, Hilda did. Oh. Okay, Gladys, tell us the details. Gladys. Come on, Gladys, tell us. I'm sorry, tell you what? Oh. About the court case. Is there a, what, what court case? Oh, for heaven's sakes, Gladys, you know when and where did you see Hilda and exactly what did she say? Oh, oh, Hilda. Oh, I ran into her at the supermarket the other day. She told me everything. She's quite upset. Surely oh. she doesn't think there's something going on between Henry and myself. Uh, she believes his account. Oh. It's just that she, she says Henry is out for revenge. Oh, dear. He's suing Gertrude for defamation of character. Oh, no. His lawyer's already on the case. That's dreadful news. The whole band will probably be involved. Oh, I think it's pretty exciting. We're, we're going to be all called as witnesses. Oh. <laughs> exciting, Gladys. You must be joking. That kind of case could ruin the band's reputation. I mean, the media, newspapers, television. Oh. Radio! They'll have a field day reporting oh, it! Oh, and not to mention online! Facetube, Twitters, pinned tweets, Instagram, oh my god, match.com! Oh, oh. For, you name it! <laughs> I can see the headlines now! Oh, yes. All is not harmony in Senior's oh. Band in small town Alberta! <laughs> We're gonna be famous, infamous, more like. Oh, and oh my lord, Sophie, you're bound to be implicated. Oh, don't worry oh, so, so much. Sorry. Don't worry so much, Rita. I mean, I'm really.
an innocent bystander. Oh, thank God you're taking it so well, Sophie. It's okay. Oh, the oh, paparazzi! Out of here! Oh, oh my God! No more pictures. Joints are all over me like a blooming rash. Well, actually, it's 75% creaking and 25% leaking. <laughs> you know, the, the real tough thing about getting old is that you look in the mirror and there you see your wizened old grandpappy staring back at you. It's, If you're trying to melt the ice in this room, Alice, forget it. Haven't you heard the rumors about Henry taking me to court? Flying around the town like a pig squaw. Today, we're going to try a new number. It's called My Blue Heaven, and it was very popular in its day. Mary Bolt, please may I have my coffee? Uh, ready, everyone? And! Marigold, I need my coffee to play. Marigold and Henry, what is going on here? You're not playing. If this morning King back, start playing grab ass with me, I might be able to play. Henry, hands off Marigold's ass. She has my copy of the sheet music. Why should I? He's invading my space. Henry, why can't you go sit where you always sit? Well, uh, Henry wants to sit nearer to the piano. Henry, you need a hearing aid. Why don't you come and talk to me about this? Norm, I don't need a hearing aid, but thanks for the offer. Preferred? He's a quack. Don't go near that fellow. No. Continue this hearing aid conversation with Henry at the break. Uh, Rita wants to get on with the practice! Marigold, Marigold, be a good girl and give Henry his sheet. Once again, I offered up my battered and bruised old heart, only to have it thrown right back in my face. Oh, you broke up with a nice lady. Well, not so much that. Uh, we were playing Scrabble. And, uh, look, she was trying to take a word down and across. And I tried to explain to her in the rules of Scrabble that explicitly states you may take your words up and down and side to side. You certainly can't go two directions at once. And then she swore she would never play Scrabble with me again. But she didn't actually say she would never see you again. Well, not in so many words, but it was the arrogant way that she stalked to the door and then slammed it that kind of sent the message. Anyway, I, she has not returned any of my calls, and I don't think I'll be seeing her again. Alex, mm -hmm. you have the greatest sympathy. We, and we have it all for your unhappy dilemma. But, for God's sake, will you cut the cackle and let us get on with the practice?
Sophie, they deserve to have the crap beaten out of them. I know. Gertrude, strong words. Who are they? The bullies at Sophie's granddaughter's school. Believe it or not, this is the good Samaritan who came to my granddaughter's rescue. Gertrude, why were you at the school that day? Well, I was collecting my own granddaughter. She goes to the same school. Her parents were on vacation, so I was doing the needful babysitting. Excuse me, folks. I need to go to the washroom. All right. Sophie, that's the most amazing thing I've ever heard in my life. Of all people, Gertrude, a good Samaritan. How did you find out? Well, during the week, when Corey and I went to the supermarket, we bumped into Gertrude and her granddaughter. And Corey identified Gertrude as that nice lady who saved me from the bullies at school. I'm blown away. Oh, I knew you'd be surprised, Rita. You know, beneath that cold exterior lurks a warm heart. And she apologized? Oh, she sure did, but she didn't have to. I mean, really, how could I repay her for doing such a kind deed? And according to Corey, those bullies have not come near, near her since that day. <laughs> Gertrude must have scared the shit out of them. <laughs> Incredible. Do we ever really know? <laughs> And on top of that, Kim and Corey have bonded in a big way. They spend a lot of time in each other's homes. So you and Gertrude have patched up your differences? Mm -hmm. Very much so. She drives those kids around everywhere. So I've been seeing a lot of her. Well, that is splendid news. You know what? I'm going to let you in a little secret. Gertrude has agreed to let me give her some violin lessons. But she doesn't want anybody to know, so mum's the word. I understand. Good. But this is even better news. Imagine if her violin playing improved before the competition. Oh, we're still going to go ahead with the competition. Well, up until this moment, I have my doubts, but now that you're back with the band and there's a promise of Gertrude improving, it could be full steam ahead. That's great. Oh, well, Sophie, your seat. Thank you. I'm Hi. back. I'm back. Hello, everybody. Did you know that Rembrandt was as deaf as a post? And yet, he painted all those wonderful pictures. <laughs> Alex, have you finished? Thought you might be interested. Well, reserve it for the coffee break. Well, I, I see that we're all back together again. So, um, I think we should start. Marigold, have your seat. Finally, hey. Okay. Ah. Wait, wait, pause it. I have something to say concerning Henry. But, well, Henry, I don't like talking to the back of your head. Would you mind turning around and facing me? <laughs> <laughs> Henry, I'd like to apologize for maligning you. Well, Sophie's accepted my apology, and, and I'm really hoping that Henry will do likewise. Henry, I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, but I really am terribly sorry for everything that I've done. Please, Henry, for everybody's sake, don't go ahead with the court case.
Gertrude? Do you have any idea the trouble you've caused between my wife and myself? <laughs> yeah, she's going to divorce you. <laughs> Close, Miracle. Well, I've said I'm sorry. What else can I do? I'll have to think about it. <laughs> Come on, Henry. I mean, to err is human, to forgive divine. Just. <laughs> oh, please. Please, Henry. Henry, she said she's sorry. What more do you want? Do you want her down on her knees? Not even that would compensate the trouble she's caused my family. <laughs> really? Oh. Okay, Henry. I'm on my knees. Now, please, will you forgive me and give up the case? Gladys! Please! <coughs> Get you on her knees. She's pleading for Henry's forgiveness! Why, it's not her fault that she's not a good violinist. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the music norm. <laughs> you must be serious if she's down on her knees. Maybe Gertrude could scrub Henry's kitchen floor. <laughs> good idea, Marigold. Gertrude, you're groveling, and it doesn't suit you one little bit. Now, give me a bit of... Oh, 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 All right, now, in the event of my forgiving you, can I expect some peace? Particularly when it comes to my amplifier, whether it's its volume, quality of its sound, or even its absence? Sure, Henry. It's a deal. As the whole band seems to be socking it to me, I guess I have no option but to accept your apology. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, 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 she apologized and he forgave oh. her. Ooh, 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 she apologized and he forgave, and he forgave her. her. Next dance, party time, he forgave her. You can do it now. I know you can do it. I guess not. The other way around. <laughs>